is up? We are back in black in the building. Shout out to everybody out there at the Corp Plantation doing what they got to do to survive, man. Man, we got a great one today. Let's do the roll call. Shout out to everybody out there. Shout out to the homegirl Latoya in Arizona. Shout out to all my Vegas people. That's Vegas bound, born and raised, or just moved to Vegas. So shout out to everybody out there in Vegas. Shout out to my sister, Shawnee. Philly is definitely in the building. Shout out to the homegirl Erica, Florida, aka Florida in the building. Man, shout out to my homegirl Jerica, also Las Vegas, Nevada. And shout out to my brother, David No Compromise and James Youngblood. Mic drop, check out his podcast. You gotta follow him on Instagram. Him and Dave for No Compromise, Mike Drop. Man, he was dropping some jewels yesterday. We're going to get into that. And shout out to the homegirl, Melina, all the way from North Carolina, a.k.a. North Kakalaka. Definitely in the building, man. We're going to get into it. Are we misinformed? Are we misinformed? The reason why I'm pausing because I want to know, are we misinformed? Do we not have the information? Are we? What we gonna talk about today? Cause you know I'm gonna hit y'all. Did Jesus come back? Oh damn. Well, let's get it. We gonna talk about it today. Hey, hey, hey. Let me get to singing. Don't have me get to singing, nigga. <laughs> Sunday school, Sunday school. <laughs> S U N D A Y S C H double O L. I turned them church songs to a straight RB song. <laughs> Sunday school. <laughs> Sunday school. <laughs> but anyway. Man, 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 I got a lot to talk. First of all, I've been having great conversations with my black folk. And look, I'm going to tell you right now. Go read Dr. Claude Anderson's Black Labor White Wealth and read Poverinomics. This is what I suggest people do. Get informed if you're not informed. And the reason why I'm saying this is too many of us foundational black Americans are voting based off of feelings and not facts. And... This is what I find interesting. I don't get upset. I think it's life. I'm older now, so I don't get upset. I just find it interesting. I find it interesting that a lot of the black folk, we will read a Bible where we don't don't know who these people are in the Bible. We've never met any of these people, but we will read that Bible and take it as law, take it as principle in a moral compass. But you have people like Dr. Claude Anderson, who's still on this earth, who's alive and breathing, who has been to the highest seats of governments and behind the governments, knows how to play the social game and have the social game rules written down. We won't take that serious, but we'll take the Bible serious. And this is no diss to my black Christians and nothing like that. But I just don't understand one why. Well, it's already contradicting. They said hair like lamb's wool, feet like burnt brass. But you're showing me a picture of Pal Gasol, a.k.a. Cesare Borgia. So we'll take that as law, but we got Dr. Claude Anderson's Black Labor, White Wealth and Poweronomics. You should never be able to find that book because that should be the standard book for every black household. I don't care who you date. I don't care who you kick it with. I don't care about nothing. I don't care if you belong to the LBGTQ. That has nothing to do with what I'm saying about the information. And the reason why I'm saying it is because... I remember when me and David and James Youngblood, I think one time me and David did a Twitter space and he was just like, Warren G, like, this is what I don't understand. You know, we'll take all the information in the Bible as law, but, you know, our forefathers are Dr. John Henry Clarks, Dr. Amos Wilson, all those people who've written written these books specifically for us. We won't even read those books. And he's not lying. That kind of like jump started, you know, how I felt about it, too. So when you're speaking to people, always suggest black labor, white wealth and poweronomics. And if they don't read it, that's on them. But this is why I know our talking points have been reached. And and, 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 and what I mean reach, we're reaching mainstream because this sister named Michaela Montgomery spoke at the at the uh, the RNC, the Republican uh, National Convention in Atlanta and see. Let me take, let me take one hat off. 
So I'm going to take the black leather, white wealth hat off and all that. I'm just going to speak to a standpoint as a strategist. If I was a strategist, that was a very smart move by the Republican Party to have a black person that's a black female who ain't been bought and been paid and all this come out and say what she needs to say. And she went to an HBCU and she's an actual foundational black American. Now, this is politics. That's what they're going to do, because what they're trying to do is soften up the blow when Donald Trump basically was like, she ain't, I ain't never remember her being black, which we did. And, you know, we covered that already. So now when Kamala comes back, she's like, oh, well, that's just Trump, the same old stuff, being racist. But I got several videos and I want to play them for you. This might be we're going to go over today a little bit because I want to play these this footage for you. I sent it to David. I'm only going to play a snippet of it. And I'm going to tell you the reason why is because in one of the videos, she was basically like I used to make collard greens and all this. And I'm like, but I already remember that video from 2020. This video was in 2020. That's how dumb people in general think other people are. The, the, the social media is undefeated. Well, clearly she's doing a video with Mindy, whatever her name is. And this lady goes on to identify Kamala as an East Indian. Kamala didn't mention black. She didn't mention biracial. She didn't mention any of that. The whole interview. She said she grew up eating Indian food. So when did you have time to cook greens? So I'm going to find that as well. So we can have a conversation about that. Then I'm going to play this sister, Michaela. Uh, Montgomery and the reason why I'm a play because I want you to hear all the black root, grassroots foundational black American talking points so I'm going to play both of those so I'm going to find this one with uh, uh, Kamala hold on Harris and uh, Indian actor what is her name Mindy I forgot what is that lady's last name Mindy cooking. Let's see. And I want you to hear this. Hold on, let's see. Okay, hold on, let's see. I want y'all to hear this. I don't want to suffer the consequences of our future president not liking my. Just tell you something. Yeah, I've never. Okay, so I'm gonna play this for y'all right now. I'm gonna play this. Because you're like, Warren, why are you playing this? Okay, so she identifies this. But it doesn't matter what you identify is. It's who you are. And you are taken away from foundational black American women that really are deserving. Not you. You are masquerading and cosplaying as a foundational black American woman. And you're not. And there was a thing with Don Lemon too. But I'm going to play that. I'm going to play a couple of videos. So we're going to get through it. So I'm just giving you context right now. This is her and this lady named Mindy Kaling cooking masala dosa. This is Indian food. So listen to what she identifies as. Dosa. <laughs> oh, 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 hi. I love that you're coming to the kitchen already. Oh, you live here. Coming to the kitchen. That's this is so do. nice. Just Are listen. Stress for making Indian food. Oh my God, you do it at a taster's. Oh my, you have no idea. This is how my mother kept all of her stuff. This is so funny. I told my dad, I was like bringing over the stuff from the store. He's like, obviously I put them in Taster's Choice. But this literally was how my mother kept all of this stuff. It's so funny. What is that? Do they tell each other? I don't know. (laughs) Now you know that she said, this is literally how my mother kept all her stuff. So remember, we ain't heard nothing about no greens, no chicken, no none of that shit. But hold on. Hi guys, it's Mindy. I'm here in my kitchen. And today we are cooking, but we have a very special guest. Very special. Senator Kamala Harris. Hi guys. <laughs> Wait, so here's what I want to know. Okay. Is it respectful to call, like, I should be calling you Senator Harris, no, right? No, you should not. That's not on my birth certificate. Okay. Call Kamala? Call me, yes, please. Okay, because the Indian in me, I feel like my parents. <laughs> Listen, just listen. Just My dad will watch this. Just don't call me auntie. Okay. <laughs> okay. I won't call you auntie. They'll be like, how could you call her by her first name? She's worked so hard. Okay, so what we're going to cook today okay. is well, an Indian recipe. Yes. Because yes. you are Indian. Yes, yes. Okay, and okay. I don't know that everybody knows. Now, she didn't say she was biracial. I'm half Indian because one of my parents are Indian and one of my parents is black, American black. So I'm half. But yeah, you can say I'm Indian. Correct that. You didn't correct it. 
at. But I find that wherever I go and I see Indian people, the uh -huh. supermarket, on uh -huh. the street, everyone's like, you know Kamala Harris is Indian, right? It's like our thing. We're Did y'all just hear that? You know Kamala Harris is Indian, right? So excited about <laughs> to have you running for president. Yeah. So we're both Indian, yes. but actually we're- She, ding! That's how many times Jenny John Blood, Day for No Compromise, uh, Erica, Shawnee, whoever else is listening, uh, Melina, how many times did she say she was Indian? Just to let us know she's Indian, right? Not foundational black American, not black, but Indian. South Indian. Yes. Um, you look like the entire ha one half of my family. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You do. I've been telling people you we're do. related already, yeah. so this is uh -huh. perfect. It's basically <laughs> true. Uh, and so were you raised eating South Indian food? South Indian food. Lots of rice and yogurt, potato curry, dal, lots of dal. Italy. Yes, Italy. Mm -hmm. That's a deep cut. Okay, so what we're... So you notice she didn't name no greens, no candy yams, <laughs> No, 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 no bacon. No, she ain't named nothing that's foundational black American food. No soul food, no nothing. She named all Indian food of how she was raised. So when did she become black again? today is two things. One of the South Indian staples is dosa, yeah. which is kind of like a sourdough crepe. And then we're going to make a potato yeah. curry, which is the traditional accompaniment. Yep. So I printed okay. out... So Where did we're you doing get this it recipe? the old-fashioned way, which is I printed out a recipe from the internet. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so when I told my dad... So I, I just wanted to let y'all know that. So y'all heard that, right? Now we want to find Don Lemon. Don Lemon stating Kamala, hold on, Kamala Harris, hold on, hold on. Kamala Harris isn't black. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. They probably took it off because he was going in. He was like, no, she is not black. You Y'all need to hear this. Don Lemon on CNN. Hold on, let's see if we can find it that way. Yeah, they must have scrubbed it. They must have scrubbed it because Don Lemon was going in too. And he was basically like, She's not black. She's Indian. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. We're going to pause it. I'm going to go through a couple of them. All right. Come on. There we go. It's a commercial. I don't want to play nobody's damn commercial. It's funny. There's this little thing called the internet and this little thing called tape. And what do you know? Don Lemon was bringing up this issue of is Kamala really African American? Just a few years ago, back in 2019, yep. he kind of went crazy on none other than April Ryan, the same woman. Y'all need to listen to this white lady, though. Listen. What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say? Study the white man study them because you know what they're doing the internet is undefeated homie so you can't say that shit on the internet as a senator running for president then all of a sudden you black joy reed was fighting with over whether or not you could really call kamala harris african-american this is interesting because african-american apparently is implying a certain demographic and it means you know you had to have had a certain number of experiences etc i'd like to see him debate joy reed on this one because he gets into it with april saying Kamala's not. Like, there's no way she's African-American because she's Indian and Jamaican. Yep. Watch it. She's a okay. woman of color, but she is a black woman. Okay, that's she, fine. I agree with that. I agree with that. But now, is she African-American? No, 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 no. But is she African-American? There's a difference. There's nothing wrong with that. No one is trying so to take anything let's away let's from her. Let's go down her. into her lineage. Let's I think you're falling I think you're falling into a trap. Listen how she's trying to talk over him. That's another black woman trying to talk over him. Another fucking probably mammy or somebody trying to justify and crowbar her into FBA lineage. And Don Lemon, like I said, it don't matter if you LBGT. I don't care if you belong with that. You're supposed to be right is right and wrong is wrong. That's it. Now listen. That. All she had to do was no, say, I am black, no, I'm but not I'm not African-American. That's it. Mm. I'm not falling in a trap. I'm not falling in. 
Let me, well, let me, well, let me finish. Hold on. I'm not falling into a trap by that. When, when, when she goes down her lineage, many Africans landed on in Jamaica and all these other Caribbean islands. So she could. What does Jamaica have to do with her not being African American, foundational Black American? Listen. Indeed, Jamaica's not America. Mm, you heard them, Don Lemon? Jamaica's not America. Hey, Don Lemon was on A asses, and I remember this interview. I remember this shit, but I'm bringing it back just so we can have clarity. But she is the, not America. But she is a black woman. She Jamaica was born did not here. Come in out of Jim Crow, okay, well let's, let's go into Ted Cruz. Did y'all hear what he just said? Let me play this back. See, y'all need to listen to this. Listen to this. He is saying basically our talking points. Jamaica is not America. They didn't face Jim Crow and desegregation and lynching and redlining. You didn't face none of those things. And slave breeding. Sorry, not over here. Not We talking about what happened in America. You're trying to attach yourself to foundational black American lineage and crow by yourself in there and act like everything is okay. Oh, I identify as you. Warren, why are you doing this? Because if a person thinks that foundational black Americans are that dumb, then they don't respect anything about you. And you can vote for the other man. I'm not telling you to vote for the other man. I'm telling you to vote your interests. But I'm going to tell you, don't go running over there to those Democrats like as if they don't have racism, white supremacy in their back pocket and they are using it and practicing it every day on foundational black Americans. That's what I'm saying. So you got to look at that. They didn't go through what we went through. Listen again. And um, so she could indeed Jamaica's be African American mixed with other races, but she Jamaica's is different. not America. But she is a black woman. She Jamaica was born did not here. Come in out of Jim Crow. Okay, well, let's, let's mm, no Jim Crow for Jamaica. So into Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. I'm, you know that she's bringing up. What did I tell you all about these Vivian Green arguments? V emotional roller coasters. That's uh, loving you ain't nothing healthy. What has the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said? Loving your own people, we are a hard people to love. That's why everybody can't go. Read Dr. Claude Anderson's Black Labor, White Wealth, read Poweronomics, and I'm done with all that. That's how you got to be towards people and laugh at them and laugh with them and keep it moving and let them keep taking the blue pill smoothie. I'm not saying that Donald Trump is any better. Y'all have never heard me say that Donald Trump is any better, but ask the average person, so what's their plan for black people? What is really their plan? What is both parties' plans for back black people? Because I'm not going to, you're not going to give me the Trump is the boogeyman, booga, 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 and Kamala Harris is just the savior. No, that's not how life works. That's, that means you're emotional. It's called facts over feelings. I've been saying that forever. You're, 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 in a, you're a Vivian Green decision maker. Emotional roller coaster. Loving you ain't nothing healthy. Loving you was never good for me. <laughs> but I can't get off. You have to be those people that get off the goddamn emotional roller coaster and say, all right, cool. That's what you want to do? You go ahead and do that. Tell that man, look, I had these conversations with black folk all the time. And they always be looking at me upside my head like, you going to vote for Trump? I'm like, they're both racist. Why are we treating Kamala as if she wasn't under the toolage of Joe 94 crime bill? As if she's going to be any different than him and she was his VP. So if Joe 94 crime bill's son who fucking lied on a federal application and is facing imprisonment for thinking he's above the law. What do you think this lady's thinking? And she's an East Indian, which means she's going to cater to immigrants. She don't care about no damn foundational black Americans. I'm talking about Canada. Ted Cruz. This is not Cuban. about Ted Cruz. You're changing know, the subject. See? You we cannot. It was hypocrisy. See? Most black folk have no education when it comes to political platforms and they're emotional and they're just running off their emotion. They're not running off of data. They're not running off facts. They're running off feelings. Most people ain't red, black, labor, white wealth. And most people are going to go along with it because they're getting set aside. That's why. Or they think they're winning because they're not voting for the races. Well, guess what? Both parties are a part of the system of racism, and white supremacy. So if both parties are not trying to establish a system of justice, that means the racial group that needs the most constructive help does not receive the most constructive help, which means you're doing the same thing, hoping for a different result, which means when you're working at a corporate plantation and you're watching every other immigrant racial group move forward, but your group is still behind in times, then guess what? Ding, 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 ding. Dr. Claude Anderson was right. We are the official permanent underclass. 
because there's too many immigrants. And what they do and what people like Kamala Harris is doing is she's doing the um, the crowbar effect. And she's doing what Dr. Klein Anderson talks at broad and ambiguous terms, people of color. So I'm an East Indian. I'm a black woman. East Indians don't identify as black. Black is saved for, and that term has been, I would say, the equivalency to African American. Nobody else identifies as black until it's beneficial for them. Most racial groups, case in point, did you watch the Olympics? I got love for Shakari, but Shakari didn't win the gold. So guess what all the goddamn islands did? They got together and started celebrating. They celebrated St. Lucia. They didn't call her the first black or the black St. Lucian. They called her a St. Lucian from the islands. So everybody will delineate from black folk when it's convenient for them. So asking fellow black Americans to delineate is like pulling teeth. So I'm to the point where I just laugh and keep it moving and let people feel the way they feel. And I don't try to convince people. I give them the information to go read it. A lot of the times people will go back and forth with you, but they ain't read nothing. And Dr. Claude Anderson's plan, um, he went through it. So if you don't think he knows what it is, I'm pretty sure he knows what it is. And racism is the competition of resources. What do black folk own in the United States of America Incorporated? I'm not changing the subject. Yes, you are. She, changing she's the a subject. black woman. I don't know what you want. Cruz. Okay. <laughs> can, can I just? <laughs> oh man, she got murked on that shit. Murked, and that's what she did. And that was four or five years ago. So the last one we're gonna talk about is we're gonna go to our sister Michaela Montgomery, and we're gonna see what she's talking about. So here we go. I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So, <laughs> my name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick-fil-A, but I am so much more than that. <laughs> it's a lot of black folk out there too. It's a lot of black, so just like it's a lot of black people, it's a lot of black people out there. So I find that interesting as well. Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network. So put some respect on my name. See, they were very intelligent. I'm talking as a strategist. I'm not talking as, you know, black foundational black Americans. They were smart. They knew that Trump was going to get a lot of pushback for p pointing that out. But what Donald Trump, when I mean pointing out, when he pointed out, oh, I thought she was East Indian. I didn't know she was black. So the Republican strategist probably started looking at social media, looking at all the news outlets like, oh, Trump and racism. So what do you know? He got a foundational black American from Georgia who's articulate and can speak and got a little sass to her tone, which is very relatable to foundational black Americans. But you notice, she didn't come out twerking, shaking her ass, rapping, doing all this sucker shit. That's the one thing I will give this Republican Party. Democrats, they got, first of all, Meg Thee Stallion didn't even read her own damn contract. She had a $10,000 contract and come bitch and complain and try to make them be the bad guy because bitch, you ain't want to read your own contract. So I don't want to hear that. So I would never to end. Plus, bitch, stop. Nobody take, take you serious. You was twerking for chicken bones. I don't want to hear that. Get your ass out of here. With your dumb ass. But anyway. <laughs> if you're not making a hundred and fifty. Uh, nah, I don't want to hear nothing about none. You get your whole ass on. Now, why don't we jump right into it? See, as a young single mother, I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high. I, I can tell you that as a young black voter, groceries are too damn high. And as an American citizen, period, seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And see, y'all notice, like I said, I got my strategist hat on now. As a strategist, think about it. 
she ain't twerking. She ain't dancing. She's articulate. They didn't have her coming out to some fucking, you know, no Lil Uzi Vert or none of that shit. Like, look at what they did. That was very, very strategic, what they did. Very intelligent, too. Because now you can't really, and there's a whole lot of black people in artists, so now you can't be like, oh, well, he don't got the black vote and all this other stuff. Uh, I don't know about that because you see a lot of black people in that audience. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we capped the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts and not feelings. Told See, you. Under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll, and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the... You notice she's saying black Americans. Boy, we on the map. David, James Jumbler, everybody listening, all my siblings, we on the map. Ain't no more. You notice they're not using the term African American. We saying Black Americans because we have to delineate from everybody else. Economy. So I'm gonna need 80 percent of y'all to vote accordingly in November. <laughs> they love me. They love me. They really love me. <laughs> the left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said, but I, I told you about the feelings you guys to pay attention to what has been done mm. they don't want to talk policy they just want to use propaganda to steal your vote the left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game she's not lying see the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family so aside from her record as a prosecutor mm. I told y'all about her as a prosecutor. Why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? Ooh. And just to let you know, Miss Willie Brown is Willie Brown's wife. Willie Brown was the mayor of San Francisco, and Kamala, it uh, prolegedly has been said that she was having relations with him when he was married to Mrs. Brown. And that's how she was able to catapult her career. So for all you women out there... This is what I mean for all you, all my black foundation, black American women who ain't with women fucking your man. Well, that's your woman right there. That's your ski eat. That's your ski eat and all this goddamn fraternity shit. Is that what y'all doing fraternities? Y'all just be fucking because I want to join that fraternity. I want to get married to join that fraternity. And one of you and one of you women can give me some pussy since that's what y'all do because that's what she did. I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. <laughs> a few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. <laughs> get on. Look, y'all, if that ain't foundational black American talking points, Whoever the Republican Party strategist is, very intelligent. Because now you have a black woman speaking on black issues and calling the sucker shit out. She did. I just played you a video how she identifies as Indian. She didn't speak nothing about no damn greens. Hi. The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. An East Indian, which is in Asia. That's exactly what I've been saying this whole time. I just played you a video from 2019 with, with Mindy Coolish or whatever her name is, an Indian. Y'all heard her say, so you're Indian, right? Yeah, my mother raised us with this stuff. So when did you become black? She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Yes, she did. I'm not just going to sit here and do anything specifically for black people. No. Remember that, y'all? Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, 
which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. She is listing facts. I'm waiting for the Democratic Party to list their facts of what they plan on doing. Or of what they have done. And we're not talking about nothing for East Indians and people of color. We're talking about black Americans. And why are we acting like strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world? Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago at the debate, Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. Yep. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. <laughs> <laughs> she not lying. When I told Trump about she, this. She is not lying. It's black vote, the black community, black such and such. Oh, black jobs. Hey, what do you mean? What's a black job? <laughs> Wait, because if you're wondering what a black job is, please, I encourage you all to drive through Atlanta at all these beautiful black-owned businesses and check and see who works there. Probably a black person working for a black entrepreneur, recycling the black dollar, <laughs> creating black generational wealth. <laughs> they come here illegally and they're taking your jobs and your resources, then please believe my cousins in the Appalachians, they coming for you too. <laughs> and y'all know Kamala Harris has yet to say Lake and Riley's name. As borders are, she opened the border to millions of illegal immigrants that have flooded American streets with deadly drugs and gangs that have spiked overdoses by over 124% and brought more crime into commu uh, excuse me, minority communities. So how's that for black folks? But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? Thank you. That's a fact. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you this fact too. How could you be religious and glory be to God and, and be in religion, but then that party also is for motherfuckers Oh, you was woman today? Okay, let's do a sex change, and now you can be a man. You can be whatever you want to be. This is better than the Matrix. So, and I know the Bible speaks highly against that. So I be under, I be trying to understand. Oh, so so we we get a chance. So this is build this is build a Republican Party and build a Democratic Party, right? Like kind of how you build a bear. Is that kind of how that works? Because I I don't, I don't get it. Like. When is it where your religious beliefs contrast with your political beast? Because shouldn't it coincide with it? I just don't understand that. This is what I mean by how do you read a book that talks about all these stories and all these fables and none of these people are on this earth today to regurgitate it, but you have Dr. Claude Anderson alive and well and is telling you vote your interest and he's done it. So I don't understand us black people who won't even take the time to read the political climate right you reading it mentally and then you go and get the books based behind it so you can have a different perspective you're not just voting just to vote and another thing too and i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna play the rest of it we going over today but i don't care i want everybody to listen to this look they'll tell you you know to vote blue but they're not giving you substantial facts behind why we're voting blue or why we're voting red And done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? And what kind of feminists would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms yep. and full locker rooms? Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never been punched so hard in her life. We cannot allow dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House because my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. Man. Hey, she got a point, though. So for all you, all you black Christians that don't believe in, you know, she bitches and he bitches and all this other stuff, 
then where the fuck is your moral compass at? That's why I be like, dog, like, understand what you're doing before you participate in it. And what I think both men and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala or the big dog Donald Trump? Man. That's hilarious. I think I'm gonna start cutting carbs. That's hilarious. That's just the that's just the, I'm gonna play a little bit more. I just want y'all to hear what she's saying. She's using a lot of our talking points. And lastly, I cannot get up here without mentioning my farmers, the backbone of this country. And aside from the Biden Harris administration hurting you guys in ways we can't even comprehend. Yeah, they they have a like a two billion dollar lawsuit against the Democratic Party for like all the racist practices that they did against black farmers. Sure did. She bringing out facts because that's real. That's real. I don't know if I sent that to you, David, but hopefully you got that too because that's some real shit. That affected a lot of black farmers. And by the rising cry, uh, cost of everything, black farmers suffered even more due to the delays associated with the Inflation Reduction Act signed in 2022. Now, don't let the Biden-Harris administration fool you because they waited until the ninth hour to, dis uh, to sign off on disbursements as a last-minute attempt to garner support. But why would they hurt the agricultural industry? Mm. Probably because they're looking forward to making more money in the pharmaceutical one. Mm. Ooh, yeah. And just to let you know, uh, Trump is anti-vac, anti-jab. So that's, that's another thing, too. I'm not telling you who to vote for because this ain't about voting. This is about talking points. This is about hearing both sides. Remember, the Republican Party wanted to sit down and speak with Ice Cube on the contract for black America. The DNC, the Democratic Party was like, we'll talk to you after we get elected. And then when they got elected, they never returned to speak to him again. And speaking of pharmaceuticals, because I promise I'm going to wrap this up. When they bring up abortion and they talk about protecting your medical freedoms, don't be afraid to mention COVID. The Biden-Harris administration forced Americans to take an experimental vaccine. You better say it again. What have I been telling y'all? David noticed, I've been telling it to my sisters, everybody like, man, because I remember by that time during the pandemic, if you moved to the, the red states, they weren't forcing people to take that shit because the corporate plantations was forcing niggas to take that shit. And it was very experimental. And took away their jobs, their livelihoods. What did I just say? What did I just say? And their freedoms if they refused. Trump gave us a choice and Biden gave us a mandate. Yep. And that's a motherfucking fact. While you all is working and like again, I'm not telling y'all this is not about voting. Get the information. I have co-workers all over the United States of America Incorporated that have moved to different places and they like, bro, they not doing that here because it's costing people their jobs behind this shit. And I'm like, damn, for real? Like I had several co-workers. I was like, bro. Like, what the fuck are they doing, dog? Like, like I don't want to take that shit. I don't want to do that shit. But they're making me put my job on the line, along with fucking Fauci and all the rest of those motherfuckers. And they act like that shit don't exist. They act like that wasn't just in 2020, 2021, 2022. You know how many people lost their jobs behind that shit? You know how many black people lost their jobs behind that shit? You know how many people got the jabby jab and ain't recovered from that shit? because I'm about to kill him with this one. So the next time the left wants to tell you that, hey, abortion is a right and you need to protect your medical freedoms, remember that they took those freedoms away from men and women the second they got in office and there's nothing stopping them from doing it again. Yep. Clock it. <clears throat> So lastly, again, I'm going to encourage you all to vote based on the facts and not feelings. Mm. Oh, he made me feel so bad when he said that. Okay, but they hurt your families when they sent all your tax dollars overseas. Oh, it hurts my feelings when he acts like that. Okay, but it hurts all of us when you see an administration failing their country that they were elected to represent. In which case, I'm going to leave y'all with, hey, mama, daddy, I made it. 
All right, that's all we're going to play. I just wanted y'all to hear that. Now, I done played Don Lemon because I want you to hear the information because I know you heard everything on the, the, the DNC side. Ron, John, Donald Trump is a racist. He doesn't like black people, blah, 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 blah. Well, she just gave you the facts of what's going on. And they it is. It's like a $2 billion lawsuit that black farmers are suing the Democratic Party for, like, you know, withholding resources and racial practices and all this other shit. And my thing is, like, we don't know that because they're going to keep that under their hat. Uh, and what she said about Senator uh, Kamala Harris, our presidential vice president Kamala Harris, that is very true. She was having a pro-legged, uh, inappropriate relationship with Mayor Willie Brown, who helped and catapulted her career to become the attorney general because he had a lot of power in San Francisco. So that really did happen, which is quite funny because I'd be like, damn, like all these black women pro allegedly that are like Kamala, Kamala, I'm going to say it again. Well, if you ski weed and in, in, in fraternity and y'all fuck each other's men, cool, then let me join and let me date a, let me date a broad that can join the damn for, uh, sorority. Cause I used to call it sorority all the time. Let me let me date a sister that's in a sorority, and I get to I get a chance to go fuck all your friends too. Since you know that's what Kamala stand for. Cause 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 when you even mention Donald Trump, motherfucker be looking at you like, oh my god, and such and such, and they racist as if the Democratic Party ain't as racist. See, here's the thing, and I'm gonna leave it with this, with a couple of points. Here's the thing about black folk. Black folk want covert racism. They don't want Southern racism where white folk either going to tell you how they feel or, or, or get the fuck on. See, we can't deal with that. Cause then if you have that, if you have that, uh, the, the understanding of how another racial group feels about you, you know where to proceed. But here on the West coast, it's all covert racism. It's this <laughs> Ty Tyrone, you got a future here, Tyrone. Then they get in the goddamn office and they calling you a dumbass nigga and fuck that nigga and he ain't moving up and he's just a dumb nigga. That's what they do on the West Coast, for sure. Southern states are more, they're gonna be blatant about it. Either we fuck with niggas or we don't fuck with niggas. It was this instance where this uh, white man had some black friends. He took him to a white restaurant and that white man was like, what, what you doing with these niggas in here? And of course, He's the white man still with the black people. He's like, these are my fucking friends, bro. Like, I'm not doing that. And fuck you for that. And they got that motherfucker. They put that man's business on blast. See, you can tell those black people were used to dealing with that blatant racism versus a lot of foundational black Americans. We like covert racism. We like the hidden racism. No, like Dr. C like Dr. Francois Welsing said, tell us what's being said when we're not in the room. I don't need you to tell me some shit I already know. And here's a point I want to make, too. When people use the, man, our ancestors died uh, to vote. Now, let me let me give you an example. I can only tell you about me, how I was raised, and how my, my siblings, my older siblings were raised. We were raised, 80s, 90s, go to school to get you a what? A good job, right? Go to school so you can get you a what? A good job. Now, that was very prevalent in the 80s and the 90s, and maybe the early 2000s it's 2024 going to school to get a good job does not exist because most people that got degrees they will tell you that's what i love my people that got degrees because my black folks that got them they'll tell you a lot of times like bro it's almost damn near twice as hard because they know these jobs know they gotta pay you more because you got the degree so they go find a nigga with no degree and pay him about 10 15 thousand dollars less but they ain't gotta pay you the high and then they play all these games with the salary and all this other stuff. And then sometimes you get a degree and you're looking for a job in your field. You can't even find a job in your field. And then you end up working around a nigga like me at the core plantation. And I didn't do no schooling for that. You're like, Warren, what do you mean by this? I'm, let, me, let me break it down to you. The 16, 17, 1800s, that would be considered archaic in today's time. Voting and not voting your interest that would be the equivalency to us just voting like our ancestors did. Well, guess what? Change is constant. So you can't use the same formula from the 17, 18, and 1900s and apply it to 2024. It does not work. Just like uh, my aunt and uncle raising me and my siblings, and we're still trying to apply working, you know, going to school to get us a good job. It, that You can't use that formula in 2024. It doesn't work. It does not work, which means what do you have to do? You have to pivot 
and change the things that you're doing to get a different result. So for people to just say, I'm going to vote for, you know, Donald Trump because I like him. Nah, dog, that's not the thing. Where I'm going to vote for Kamala because she's black. No, dog, that's not the thing. The thing is leveraging your vote and getting the right information so you can pass the same information down to the next generation. Because you don't see that's the problem. So many of us have been misinformed. I talk to so many black folks or just people, period. They don't even know who Dr. Claude Anderson is. They don't know about black labor, black labor, white wealth or poweronomics. And that's a problem because you're basically telling me to use the same template from the 80s and the 90s, which has gotten us nowhere. And now we're in the mid upper two, uh, uh, 2020s and shit. And we're still just, well, I'm going to vote for her because she's black. That's crazy. That's doing the same thing, hoping for a different result. That's insanity. That's why I get say information is power. It's key. You don't have the information. You're null and void. You're dead in the water. And that's all I'm saying. I can't take what my aunt and uncle raised. That's on go to school to get a good job. That doesn't work in 2024. You're going to have to pivot. You might have to work two and three jobs. I know people with degrees and they working two and three fucking goddamn jobs. Because guess what? The pay ain't the same. The cost of living ain't the same. We can't take the same formula from the fucking 80s and the 90s that ain't really gotten black folk nowhere and then apply to the 2024s when Dr. Claude Anderson told us in 2000, you will be the permanent underclass. This is the time now where black Americans are on a major stage, whether y'all like what that sister said from the Republican Party or not. They are saying our fucking talking points. The shit that we've read in Black Labor, White Wealth and Poweronomics and the new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. And the next time you have this conversation with anybody a part of the Democratic Party, don't get into it with them. Just say, what are their policies so I can study them and I can base them off the books that I've read? Because I need to know what's the best interest for my racial group. They're going to be like, that's divisive. Those are dumb niggas that ain't read shit and don't want to do nothing. It's called drinking the blue pill smoothie. And if you watch The Matrix, when you drink the blue pill, you go to bed and wake up and it's the same shit. When you take the red pill, you are awakened. And now you have to do better because you know better. Guilty, nigga. I'm done. Peace. <laughs> oh, man. Ha, 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 ha.